client. And by Unisys, the computer company that works with you to produce solutions for you. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Michigan Replay. Seems like deja vu whenever Michigan opens with Notre Dame. We're always saying it was a tight one, it was a close one. Notre Dame 24, Michigan 19, and a tough one to lose in a game, I think, like the previous years where you really didn't play up to your potential and Notre Dame got away. Well, I don't know. Um, you know, the uh, last year they returned a punt for a touchdown that beat us. This year, two kickoff returns that beat us. Uh, the kicking game was a disaster for us, um, particularly those two plays. Uh, we missed an extra point. We punted for a little over 30 yards a punt. Um, and we were always in bad field position because of that. Um, but the thing that was uh, most troublesome to me is that we got less than 100 yards rushing. Yeah. I would never have guessed that. I will say this. I think in the two weeks since their opening game, that Notre Dame has done a great job with their defense because they played much better against us uh, than they did against Virginia. Have you ever in your entire coaching career had two kickoff returns for touchdowns in the same game? No, I this haven't had. It. No, I can't recall too many times when we've had a kickoff return, period. And, well, the last uh, one against Michigan was 1957. Yeah. So nobody well, since you've there been there. haven't been very many. It's... Uh, but it's unbelievable that uh, that he was able to get out twice on us. And, uh, of course, that killed us, no matter how you add it up. And they controlled the ball an awful lot with their fullback. Well, <clears throat> as you can see here, that's true. They gave the ball to the fullback a lot. The truth of the matter is, Jim, they had, um, offensively, they really didn't hurt us an awful lot. They broke a couple of plays, like this one here on a power sweep. Uh, they had a 20-yard play or so with a fullback. They had three plays of 10, over 10 yards. And those plays uh, really didn't beat us um, because I thought the defense did an excellent job. Especially when they got close, the defense really tigered up. Yeah. And the other thing is uh, their touchdown drive, as you know, was following a fumble 24 yards in. So here they're down there to kick a field goal, and, uh, and he misses it. Uh, so, uh, that didn't hurt us, but, uh, uh, we lost field position there right away. They won the toss, and the weather was terrible, so they deferred, and we had to receive. Speaking of opening games, mistakes that happened, this is the one that hurt you. Well, uh, we fumbled the ball here, and they got the ball at the 24, and, um, that led to their first touchdown. Um, you can't do that play a team of this caliber, you just can't, uh, you can't do that. And they were constant in moving that fullback, boy. They wanted to work that middle. Yeah, they did it a lot, but uh, truth of the matter is, Jim, they're four yards or less. I mean, it wasn't like it was killing us. And, uh, you know, we could get them stopped. Uh, this was a uh, good call by them. Slipped the fullback out the backside, hadn't seen that play. And uh, out, of the, you know, out of the wishbone, you don't expect the fullback to be a receiver, and they kind of slipped that one in on they you. They sure did, and they did a good job on it. Um, you got some good returns. You didn't bust any. But... No, we didn't bust any, but our returns were decent, but, uh, you know, nothing that uh, I thought this one might go, but we got caught from behind there. Uh, but really, uh, you know, the kicking game was just an absolute disaster. This is a third and four situation here. Mike throws a slam in here to Chris Calloway for a first down. Um, we got the ball and we're moving a little bit here right now. Uh, Fakes again, comes over the middle. This is a pass interference call on number 15, Terrell of Notre Dame. Uh, kind of incidental contact, uh, but uh, well, I, <laughs> I don't think Lou liked it either. Uh, I'm sure Lou didn't like it. <laughs> but that was it. Here's a great play, a throw from Taylor to uh, Calloway for a touchdown. And we're back in the game. Unfortunately, we miss the extra point. And you know when you do that uh, and you end up trailing by a point, it always comes back to haunt you somewhere. You're always playing catch-up, running two-point plays and things like that. Yeah. In the first half, after you looked at it, I thought when I was watching the game that basically you would go to work on the offensive line and say, hey, we got to get the ball and move it on the ground. Because the only time we really moved the ball fairly well was through the air there in that mm -hmm. one drive for the touchdown. Mm -hmm. So did you think that... Well, that, get it done on the ground? that's what we talked about, that we had to move the football on the ground. Notre Dame surprised me with the quickness in their defensive front. 
Uh, I didn't think I was going to see that. And uh, I never felt that there would be anybody up front that we couldn't block pretty decently and get some yardage with our backs. But we did, uh, we just couldn't move the ball on them. Okay, the second half, of course, saw a lot more action. It didn't turn out in Michigan's way, though. But we'll be back. We'll take a look at that second half of Michigan-Notre Dame. That's coming up next when Michigan Reflex continues. If you have a good special team, then you win. If you don't, then you lose. And uh, obviously, we have a couple more bugs to work out. To stay competitive, your company must increase productivity at least 10% a year. Without the right computer system, you'll never have a chance. Call Unisys. A special report, a one-on-one -on -one discussion with a Payne Weber professional. We're talking with Senior Vice President Mark Sutton. Mark, what do you think is the most serious problem financially facing people today? It's having enough money for retirement. People are living longer and they're living more active lifestyles. The fact is, most people could live 25 to 30 percent of their life in retirement. But don't most people plan ahead? Most people do plan, but they don't plan early enough, and they don't plan well enough. The fact is, most people are going to outlive their financial resources. What's the solution? The solution is to begin planning now. And how can Payne Weber help? We can help by identifying current sources of retirement income. We can help devise an investment strategy that will allow you to make up any shortfall that's not provided for in your company plan or with Social Security. Importantly, we will help you monitor your plan on an ongoing basis to be sure that those funds are invested properly. Thank you, Mark. For Payne Weber's free booklet, Retiring on Your Terms, call 800-950-5050. Nine percent of CEOs surveyed believe their companies are too short-term oriented. You need a computer company that really knows your business to plan for the long term. Call Unisys. At halftime, Michigan was trailing seven to six, and when I was there at the game watching it personally, Bo, I thought that. First game jitters were going to be solved at halftime. Second half, it's going to be a little right. bit more concerted effort, and there was going to be a little less jitters, I think. Well, I, I, I don't have way. any fault with the effort. Um, I, I just think that um, we had uh, a lot of first game mistakes. You can't play a team like Notre Dame. It's already played a game and uh, make mistakes. And uh, that's exactly what we did. And, of course, the two big ones were on the kickoff. Coverage. And the worst thing that could have happened, worst case scenario, you come out, you've got a kick to them in the second half. That's right. You kick to them, and this the guy, guy goes the, the distance. Back. He runs it all the way back for a touchdown. And uh, those kickoffs uh, are just perfect for what, what you want to do with a kickoff return because they're about the 10, 12 yard line, they went real high. It gives them a nice time to set up their wedge, and there you go. And this is part of what you're talking about in your kicking game. That's yep. got to get solved. you got to have those higher and deeper, really. Give your defense a chance to funnel him into the middle. Right, right. But uh, I thought uh, defensively, except on a couple occasions, played uh, extremely well. Uh, ran a lot of options. Rice ran the ball quite a bit. Made a few games like this on the keeper. You know, they didn't use him until really the second half. The first well, half, he was kind of quiet. I think uh, the reason was that they were trying to establish the fullback, and, and they did a pretty good job, although he wasn't going to kill us. You know, at least they uh, they got him established. Now, you go with Elvis Gerbeck because Michael the, Taylor's hurt. On the fumble play, uh, uh, Michael Taylor got hurt, and Elvis went in, and... Uh, did a good job, hit this play uh, uh, in route with uh, Greg McMurtry. And uh, I thought overall, going in when you're trailing by 11, uh, 
he did a darn good job. Great, great, great catch by McMurtry. Um, you won't find any better than McMurtry and Callaway. Those two guys are something else. They're a wonderful player. Elvis is doing a good job. He's uh, picking away at some of the short ones, and although he didn't rack up a lot of yardage, he was very consistent in his throwing. Here he ball play, and uh, we get down to the two-yard line. Um, I thought he did an excellent job going in there for uh, really a freshman. He hasn't played a lot of football. Here he, he hits uh, Derek Walker for a touchdown. We're back in the game. Too. Absolutely, right back in the game, and Gerback is gaining confidence as it goes, and boom, it happens again. It happens again. So he kicked right to him, and he comes up the middle. He stopped right there. We missed a tackle. A guy runs... Uh, right by him, and uh, next thing you know, they score again. Was there a thought, I mean, at, at the time after the first one, of it like kicking away from well, him? Well, I would think so, it? Jim, that you <laughs> kick away from a guy who just ran one back for you, but uh, we kicked it right down to him again, and uh, and he scored. Now, at this point, you're gone to hurry, hurry, basically. You don't go we to went, a huddle. We, we felt that uh, it was time for us to move as quickly and score as quickly as we could because... Uh, Time was running out on it. So although there was quite a bit of time on the clock, you're playing against a team that isn't going to throw the ball, Jim, and they're going to possess the ball and run the clock with an 11-point lead, so you better get in there quick. And that's what we chose to do. I'll tell you, Gerback on this drive looked like a veteran. I thought he played very well. well. This all hurry, hurry, and he's, you know, for a young kid, I thought he did a great job. Put us right in there. They had a bad coverage there because we didn't cover that post cut at all. But anyway, it's 24, uh, 19 now. Now this is where, if I had it to do over again, I would not have short kick. Of course, I didn't figure on kicking it right into our guy. Yeah. But um, I, um, uh, I would have kicked it down there. But on a possession team, an option team, uh, four minutes isn't much. And uh, so I figured, um, let's go for the, um, the short kick now. Well, I think the other thing, too, that probably played, you only had one timeout left. We only had one timeout left. We did not have a lot of timeouts. We needed the ball now. And um, if we were to kick deep to him, what we were hoping for was that they turned the ball over, and they hadn't done that. So um, I, I, if, I, if I had to do over again on the basis of looking at the kick, I would have kicked it deep. But... Overall, looking at the first game, a loss, obviously, something you don't like. Elvis Gerback looked solid as a quarterback. The work, I think, has to be done up front in the offensive line, from what you've told us. Well, the work has to be done, first of all, in the kicking game, Jim. And the kicking. That would be the most important thing. The second thing would be uh, to reestablish our running game. I don't think you can win in football with passing alone. You have to be able to run the football. And no matter how well we pass the ball, that's not going to satisfy me until we can uh, punch holes in the defense and run. And uh, we're going to do that. We're going to do that before this season is over. I promise you that. When you promise you're going to run football, I believe you're going to get it done. <laughs> Don't go away. We'll be back. Uh, have a little happier topic. 20 years and 20 teams. We come back to salute Bo. That's next when Michigan Replay continues. Uh, I led the team a little bit. I could have done a lot better, but uh, you know the score doesn't show much. We, you know, the main goal is to win, and that's what we didn't do. Did you know that Buick ranks among the most trouble-free American cars? Don't take our word for it. According to one measure, a survey of thousands of new car buyers conducted by J.D. Power & Associates, Buick LeSabre is the most trouble-free American car. And the classic Buick Riviera is the most trouble-free American luxury car. We think there's a new symbol for quality on the great American road. The sign of your Buick dealer. Guy came by today trying to sell me some imitation body parts. Copycat hoods, doors, and fenders for GM cars. But I wasn't buying. You see, I know some of those imitations don't come up to GM specs for fit, finish, and corrosion protection. How do you protect yourself? 
ask to see a repair order before insurance work begins and insist on genuine General Motors parts. Now with a lifetime warranty on parts and labor. For almost 30 years, we've been delivering to you in 30 minutes or less, guaranteed. Sometimes we even arrive a little early. So next time, call us, because over half a million times tonight, we'll be driving home this hot, fresh fat. Nobody delivers better than Domino's Pizza. Nobody, 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 nobody. Michigan Record Book, brought to you by the AeroQuip Corporation, supplying industry with plastics and fluid conveying components. What two players combined for the longest passing play in Wolverine history? In 1975, Rick Leach and Jim Smith connected for an 83-yard TD versus Purdue. For 20 years, Bo Schembechler has been prowling the sidelines for the Michigan Wolverines. In those 20 years, a lot of great players have worn the maize and blue. And as Bo has always said, Michigan football is a player's program. Well, this past April, players from Bo's 20 teams paid him tribute. A special reunion called 20 Years, 20 Teams, Our Tribute to Bo took place at Chrysler Arena. Better than 400 players, coaches, trainers, and managers made the trip back to Ann Arbor to honor their coach. ABC Television's Dan Deerdorf, a former Wolverine and one of Bo's best, was the master of ceremony. Each team had a representative say a few words. And as you'd expect, from 20 diverse generations of Michigan football, the comments ranged from good-natured kidding to the emotional. And probably, thank you for teaching us probably one of the most important lessons while we were here at Michigan. Those who stay will be champions. So may God bless you, and thank you, Bo. And uh, I would like to say one thing to Coach Schembecker and congratulating him on his only national championship uh, with the basketball team. And uh, like I tell you one thing, the way you've been taking credit for that win, it's like you shot those last two free throws. Maybe the greatest thing that you taught us, something I always remember, is that you, know, you taught us that life and football are attitudinal. And then in the final analysis, it's our attitude, our attitude more than our ability, that determines the course of our life. You'll always be remembered as a winner, Bo. You know, but I think a truer statement is this. You build winners. The final speaker was, of course, Bo. He was greeted by a very warm standing ovation, and only the head coach could capture the emotion and the feeling of family that existed that evening in Chrysler. Because no matter what I've done or where I go or the new friends I meet and all the accolades they all say about me and all that, the bottom line is my friends are you. Every one of you are welcome to come back to Michigan at any time because you are Michigan. You are exactly what you said you were. You built this program. You won in this program. This program is you. And I'm damn proud of the fact that I had an opportunity to coach you all. Thank you. It was really quite an emotional evening, and uh, we did edit out some of the comments that were a little earthier, and yet... Yeah, I'm glad you did. <laughs> and yet... Uh, it was really special. There aren't many guys that hang around 20 years in coaching to have their teams come back to honor them. Well, I don't think it was uh, so much uh, to come back to honor me. Well, it as, was. Uh, we were a tribute to you. I know. Now, I know I you know, don't but, like to uh, say that, but it's true. But it was uh, great to have uh, all the guys back and, and uh, see them have so much fun uh, kidding one another. Um, 84 team took a... <laughs> Took a real well, ring, didn't we it? almost threw them out of the room because they, they were six and six. Had, they had to have a vote to see if they'd <laughs> leave them in there. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, that was a great evening. And um, for those people who uh, wonder whether college football is really worthwhile or not, should have been there. And then they'd realize the tremendous impact that the game had on a lot of great men that were there that night. I think one of the great things was done by Jim Lyle, one of the speakers that we featured in there. 
Jim was not one of the great players, no. and yet Jim had a tremendous impact at that banquet and what he said. Yeah. Well, Jim was one of those guys got the hell kicked out of him <laughs> on the demonstration teams. But, but he hung in but there. But he hung in there, and he always felt he was a part of Michigan football, and he was. Great. Part of Michigan football is game two, and that's UCLA. We'll have the scouting report when we return.